Coming up on Ag Week TV, we'll have highlights from the Northern Corn and Soybean Expo in Fargo. We'll talk with the experts about how to maximize alfalfa production here at Alfalfa U. I'm Katie Pinky in southeastern Minnesota. I'll take you to a dairy farm selling their cows but expanding their cropland. And find out if industrial hemp is coming to South Dakota. Welcome to Ag Week TV, I'm Michelle Rook. This week we start off the show at the Northern Corn and Soybean Expo here at the Fargo Dome. This is the annual meeting for the North Dakota Corn Growers and Soybean Growers Association and where they set their policy priorities for the upcoming year. This is only the second year the two groups have held their convention jointly. The Expo is a full day of free events designed to help farmers be better producers. It includes a trade show showcasing emerging technologies and products, plus a variety of informative breakout sessions and speakers on the hottest issues in the industry, including new crop production practices, the planting season weather outlook, and global market trends. At the Expo, I moderated a hot topic panel on international trade. Of course, the big question everybody has right now, and I'm going to start with you, Jim Sutter, because uh, China, U.S. trade negotiations, will we get a deal by March 1st? And if we don't, will the deadline be extended so that we can get something worked out? Michelle, why don't you ask me a difficult question to begin with? <laughs> I would tell, what I know about the negotiations is that there have been very good discussions taking place as far back as this past summer when our U.S. ag negotiators, so Rep. Ambassador Dowd, Under Secretary McKinney, and several others have been meeting with their counterparts in China and talking about how do we work out a deal on agricultural trade, trying to overcome many of the issues that we have, whether it's biotech approvals, uh, other SPS issues, just other little sort of non-tariff trade barriers, trying to work those out. And I think we're making good progress on that. Dr. Wilson, you know, we have the big issues left, the IP, the IT, so can you get a deal by March 1st, or are we looking at the next $200 billion of tariffs going into place? And if we get a deal, will it include a lot more U.S. ag purchases? So I follow this stuff with a microscope, and I read this South China Morning Post every day. <laughs> and this morning, it said, it didn't say officially it won't be March 1st, but they're debating the next dates of meetings, which would be the end of March, either mar -a lago or in China. So that tells me it's probably not going to be March 1st. I'd be curious what happens on March 1st if there's not a meeting by March 1st. Of course, nobody knows that here. But it's a pretty monumental task to, to sort of unravel these things uh, like intellectual property. You know, these soybeans is easy, but these intellectual property and forced technology transfer, they're monumental and it's hard pressed to think you're going to solve those in 90 days. No doubt. Leslie, as far as China and what <coughs> corn hopes to get out of it, they've mentioned purchases of corn, of ethanol, and I know you guys are looking at biotech asynchronization. Are those your priorities out of this trade talk? Um, I would say that's a pretty good summary, Michelle. I mean, we certainly hope that some of the issues, and I think the administration has suggested they're on the table that we care about, um, like, like dealing with asynchronous biotech approvals. Um, and, and I think you've all heard the horror stories of like seven year delays. Um, we've seen some new traits shake loose out of the process, um, and including the new chrome corn trait, for example. Um, but that doesn't mean that the actual system is going to change and be more predictable and reliable and um, conform to the global trading system that you know we've signed up for. So um, that's one of the things we need to see is that longer term change so we don't find ourselves you know a year from now right back where we started from. Do you think as well that have we lost that market for good? I mean, we built China as a long term reputation market these guys went in for 35 years and worked to develop that market. Have we ruined our long-term relationship with them? Here, here's my concern. We've had about four major trade, trade disruptions in my career. So that was the Russian grain embargo. We are, instead of exporting to Russia, we're competing with Russia today. We've had something in poultry. We had MIR-162. 
So they have the ability to retaliate mm -hmm. against yeah. unreliable supplier. And I've told the North Dakota Soybean Group, and I'm sure you, you're aware of this, that the number one priority is try to figure out how to convince China they can, that we're reliable. Because if we don't return to China, you're going to be selling like crazy in Europe and all this, and you're still going to be storing soybeans. Thanks so much for joining us for our Hot Issues International Marketing Panel here from the Northern Corn and Soybean Expo in Fargo. Water issues are always a hot topic with growers. And one of the breakout sessions here at the Northern Corn and Soybean Expo was on water management and wetland regulations. Michael Pates has more. Kiel Van Bruggen is a lawyer from St. Cloud, Minnesota. He specializes in ag drainage issues. Van Bruggen says tile drainage continues to be a popular way to make farmland more productive. While a difficult farm economy makes financing a challenge, federal policies are becoming more farmer friendly. What I am seeing change is a lot of policies that have been worked on over the years and are in the handbook for NRCS are now being codified. So that gives them a little bit more permanency, a little bit more weight. Van Bruggen says landowners thinking of projects should double check their land records with Farm Service Agency and the Natural Resources Conservation Service. They should also keep up on recent policy changes. Michelle? Thanks, Mikkel. When Ag Week TV returns, we'll take a look at megatrends in agriculture and find out why a farm family in southeastern Minnesota is getting out of the dairy business after 50 years. It's time for the 82nd Annual North Dakota Winter Show. Make your way to Valley City March 5th through 10th for all the excitement. Party in the Dirt on March 8th with Confederate Railroad, Chancey Williams and the Younger Brothers, and Redline. PRCA Rodeo on March 9th and 10th is filled with thrilling rodeo action and mutton busting. You don't want to miss out on exciting events like tractor pulls, horse pulls, ranch rodeo, and special stage acts. Complete schedule and tickets online at NorthDakotaWinterShow.com or find us on Facebook. With the success of the Case IH Diger Quad Track and Magnum Road Track tractors, it's no secret why Case IH is the leader of the track. So it wasn't surprising when the competition started imitating us. But only Case IH offers a five axle design to give you a smoother ride, more power to the ground, with less burning and compaction. Still, we're flattered. In fact, if we weren't already red, <laughs> we'd be blushing. Make sure your farm equipment is season ready with an uptime inspection from your Titan Machinery service professionals. Titan Machinery's team of Case IH factory trained service technicians has the knowledge and experience to find, correct, and prevent mechanical issues that could shut you down during the season. Your planting and harvest windows are short. For genuine Case IH parts and service, schedule an off-season uptime inspection at Titan Machinery today. Titan Machinery, your local Case IH dealer. At Superior Grain Equipment, we're committed to quality and service, offering you the best in grain storage and dryers for any size operation. Our experts will work with you to determine the most efficient and economical storage solution for your needs. We help protect your bottom line and your future with the industry's best bins and warranties. Make the superior choice for protection today and tomorrow with Superior Grain Equipment. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every sized operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and JNM. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full-service Meridian hopper bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. The term megatrend means an important shift in an activity such as farming. In an upcoming Ag Week magazine story, Michael Pates takes a look at a few of the megatrends experts say are affecting farmers in the Dakotas, Minnesota, and Montana. Some like technology, world politics, and consumer influence can change and frequently do, but significant changes to climate and weather may be the biggest megatrend because it's a force beyond control. Changes in weather patterns have changed the region's crops over the last 15 years, and experts expect more changes to come. I think certainly uh, farmers that are agile, that are well-informed, that have uh, Plan Bs in place, uh, 
to deal with uh, the kinds of uh, variability that we have in, in our weather uh, is, is probably going to be something that's going to be really important uh, to their sustainability and profitability. Here's an interesting fact. The center of North America and the core of Asia from Ukraine to Siberia are far from the ocean and have the most extreme wet and dry cycles on the planet. Low milk prices the last couple of years have taken their toll on the dairy industry. Katie Pinky talked to one Minnesota family that's made the decision to sell their cows to preserve the farm and their way of life. A lot of these older, smaller dairy farms are just so physically intensive that uh, the people just wear out. In 2018, Minnesota lost approximately 400 dairy farms. We're at a farm that is also selling their cows in 2019, but looking to expand their cropland. Growing up here, if you weren't milking cows, you weren't farming, period. Glenn and Melinda Groth aren't the only farmers in their area selling their dairy cows. I think there'll be more yet, too. After 50 years of dairy cows on the Groth farm, a change was needed. It's a lot safer bet to invest uh, our money and our time into the crop farming entity. Milk prices, feed prices, did that play into your decision? Oh, for sure. Uh, if the milk price is low, you just can't make those investments. And then you have to look at what your future, future looks like if you don't see the milk price turning around. And then there's the obvious uh, you know, efficiencies of scale, buying and bulk buying in bigger quantities. So you add those factors together. Um, you know, the small farm like man, mine can't really touch what the, the biggest farms are, are doing in terms of cost production. We weren't in a situation where somebody was saying, you're done. Melinda Groth spent eight years away from farming, building a career as a Mayo Clinic researcher, then was farming on her own before meeting Glenn. Melinda found herself abruptly changing her path after meeting Glenn. I never imagined that I would be a, a dairy farmer's wife and being a farmer myself, it was kind of how do we make this work? How do we merge two farms? The decision to sell their dairy cows has been a part of nearly every conversation Glenn and Melinda have had lately. There's just not an easy way to come to that decision. Um, we know that we have a really good award-winning herd of cows, so we want to make sure that we do the best for them. And I don't think we want to be in another five, ten years feeling as old as maybe we feel right now. And I'm hoping that we can get that back um, with the lifestyle change. Let's talk about the scariness. You're going to sell the cows. And day one, what does that look like? Day one is probably going to be some tears, but I hope that that's going to be quickly replaced with the weight of that decision being lifted. A decision that at least we got to make it, we called the shots on it, and probably days two through seven, we might be frolicking a little bit with <laughs> some extra time. I'm looking forward to that first real family meal at the end of the day where we all eat together and it's not in shifts. Through this experience, the growths are focused on raising their next generation on their farm. I want them to know that there, there is a bright future in agriculture for them, no matter what it looks like. And even if you maybe do have to do a scary step of, of changing directions, midlife or mid wherever, mid-career. And for the first time, taking stock of their lives won't involve livestock. In southeastern Minnesota, this is Katie Pinky for Ag Week. Still ahead on Ag Week TV, this extremely cold weather has been stressful on livestock. We'll find out how it's impacting herd health. And later, we'll tell you why alfalfa is growing in popularity. Get ready for the biological revolution. Agzyme by Ag Concepts is the leading biological soil enhancement product on the market today. Agzyme improves soil health and fertilizer efficiency for healthier crops and better yields. Definitely is making a difference. I really feel that it gives me a bump in the soybeans and corn. I would say 55 up to 70 bushel soybeans. We've even had as high as 75. Probably the best bang for your buck. Join the biological revolution with Agzyme by Ag Concepts. With the all-new GreenFit system from Rycard, Plug and Play is finally a reality when using John Deere AutoTrack guidance with existing new products like the Challenger 1000 series or all-new C-Series Road Gators from Butler Machinery. GreenFit is an authorized navigation interface that utilizes the existing John Deere AutoTrack guidance system to steer most Challenger tractors and sprayers. GreenFit eliminates the worry of learning and converting to a new steering system when buying an industry-leading Challenger from Butler Machinery. Learn more about GreenFit at butlermachinery.com. 
Upgrade your trailer to electric with the Rolltech electric system from AgriCover. Strong, flexible pivot arms and motor mount rotate and telescope, allowing the roll tube to rise and flex over heaped loads. The positive automatic lock is impossible to back off to control the flow of grain. This integrated system uses one wireless remote to operate up to 10 tarps and hoppers, keeping your driver out of the dust, rain, and harm's way. See the Rolltech system in action at an AgriCover dealer near you. This is Dennis Belisky reminding you, we do auctions and we do them well. You've built your operation with hard work and when it's time to sell, all or part, you deserve the best. Details from repairs and preparation to promotion and settlements are not routine. Chances are you'll only do this once, so we'll tailor an auction just for you and get it done right. On site at your farm or added to one of our highly successful Alaris Center auctions, we have the skill, reputation, and integrity to meet your needs with best-in-class commitment and quality service. Find us at resourceauction.com or call 701-757-4015. Our first crop stop of 2019 takes us to Mansfield, South Dakota, where Michael Fishbach has about 150 head of stock cows. He's already started calving, and the season came about 16 days early due to some of the worst winter weather he's seen in recent years. Fishbach says a low-pressure system coming through can set things off. I think we had a fairly open winter up until Christmas, and I, I think that just, I think them calves grew a little quicker inside. They developed a little quicker, and... And then when this, this blizzards hit, that spurred everything and we we're off to the races. Fishbach keeps the calves inside for at least the first couple of days, but with the cold has had a few ears freeze on the tips. The reported cases of livestock loss in South Dakota due to the cold snap have been next to zero. At least that's the word from officials with the Animal Disease Research and Diagnostic Lab at SDSU. Animals acclimated well coming into the winter, which is helping. However, the biggest factor is the extra mile producers are going to make sure animals are getting the extra feed, water, and protection from the wind they need to endure sub-zero temperatures and wind chills. All of those efforts are just a lot more work for our animal caretakers to take care of the animals, but so far it seems to be paying off and showing off that uh, you know, we haven't had a lot of real severe cases of death loss or disease. However, feedlot conditions in the region aren't faring as well as producers have been dealing with muddy pens starting already this fall. That has led to poor feed conversion and lower weights. Will we get a break in our stressful winter weather anytime soon? Here's our AgriWeather Outlook. Rather subtly, rather quietly, the weather has now turned into the latter stages of the winter season. I mean, here we are at uh, basically the middle of February, right? Last winter in the Northern Plains, Winter weather lingered until about the first half of April, and it does appear to be lingering for the time being. The cold weather is not showing any signs of giving up yet, but we are losing the worst of that frigid weather for the time being. There are still more chances of snow, although we will be taking a little bit of a break from the stormy pattern for the next few days. Still have that cross-polar flow, although it's beginning to kind of weaken just a little bit. The true Arctic air has shifted back toward Hudson Bay. The weather remains cold or cool throughout much of the United States. A lot of the cool weather is shifted back into the West Coast this week, and the Southeast is where things are really heating up. The cold weather of the Northern Plains will linger, but the really crazy cold stuff will stay pretty far north into Canada, perhaps surging southward toward the end of this week in a shallow layer of cold air. Moving ahead until next week, the last full week of, of the month of February, it's going to remain quite cold in the middle of the country. The Southeast will continue to be warm, and we'll start to see some heat going up the west coast. As far as snow goes, the storm track for the time being is a little further south, although we may get some snow into maybe the southern part of the Corn Belt this week. Dry weather in most of the northern plains and upper Midwest because of the weakening 
uh, northern branch of that jet stream, but it won't stay that way forever. I look for a southwest system to bring a snow chance toward the end of this week, and there may yet be another one next week. So we're not quite finished with the snowy weather either, as well as the cold weather. One more round of snow probably toward the end of next week. That would be around the latter part of February. So the pattern still remains somewhat wet and definitely cold, but not quite so arctic and not quite so snowy. When planting season comes around, time is precious and you don't have a moment to waste. This spring, keep your planters rolling with a user-friendly seed tender from North Star Ag. We have seed tenders for every sized operation from Meridian, Unverfirth, and JNM. North Star Ag also sells a variety of Valmar spreaders, the leader in air boom delivery, and is a full-service Meridian hopper bin dealer. Visit NorthStarAg.com to see our complete new and used equipment inventory or give us a call. Farmers take pride in growing safe, affordable, nutritious food. And since over 90% of U.S. farms are family or individually owned, keeping land and animals healthy makes sense for all of us. If you have questions about the food you eat, talk to the people who grow it. North Dakota farmers and ranchers are your best source for reliable facts on food and farming. Visit findourcommonground.com and become part of the food conversation today. Brought to you by the North Dakota Soybean Checkoff. Stephas. We have representatives everywhere. Through North Dakota, South Dakota, Iowa, and Minnesota, we can find a buyer for what you were selling. We know how to market your farmland or equipment. Give us a call. We'll sit down and tell you all about the Stephas way. Field Drainage Inc. has perfected the art of agricultural drainage by helping hundreds of farmers since 1978. We are a second generation family owned business for over 35 years. The Field Drainage Inc. team will work closely with you to conduct a thorough analysis of your needs and expectations. Provide an estimate that fits your budget, perform all work in a timely and professional manner, and provide continued service after installation. Field Drainage Inc., your trusted drain tile installation company for over 35 years. Martinson Ag Risk Management offers a variety of crop marketing and crop insurance packages to our customers. With over 40 years of experience, our dedicated staff works hard to ensure you get the best advice on crop insurance, marketing, and risk management. Contact Randy or any of the staff at Martinson Ag Risk Management today at 701-205-4200 or visit us online at martinsonag.com. Alfalfa production is already huge in the region, but interest continues to grow, especially with the expansion of the dairy industry in the I-29 corridor and strong prices. Farmers wanting to learn how to produce top-end alfalfa gained insight from the experts at Alfalfa U in Sioux Falls. Alfalfa acreage is back on the rise in the region. Forage specialist Dr. Bruce Anderson says it's partially because alfalfa has had a better return than other crops the last few years. Alfalfa tends to remain one that uh, most people can still make a, a pretty good profit with as long as they're managing it and taking advantage of uh, some of the opportunities that it provides for us. That includes proper weed management and the key is to start with a vigorous stand. If you've got a healthy stand, a um, lot of alfalfa plants uh, per area, it's going to do a great job suppressing weeds, preventing emergence of weeds, and that's really where weed control starts. Even though alfalfa fixes its own nitrogen, fertility is also important. Kurt Wolfolk with Mosaic recommends a balanced approach to crop nutrition. Not only the macros like P and K, some of our micronutrients like zinc and boron can also affect our nodules. Those are the little nitrogen factories that alfalfa uses to make its nitrogen. New technology is pushing the production and quality envelope, but Don Miller with Alpharex Seed says harvesting alfalfa before it hits maturity also helps. When you get to full flowering, it uh, switches where you have 40% leaves and 60% stems, and, and leaves is where the quality really is, and so if we can improve leaf to stem ratio, we've improved quality in alfalfa. He says there are also new biotech varieties of alfalfa with better stem to leaf ratio, wheat control, and even those that correct for high salinity. 
South Dakota Governor Kristi Noem is asking the state legislature to table discussions on industrial hemp until next session. This comes after a bill to legalize the crop in the state unanimously passed out of committee. Industrial hemp is seen as a good alternative cash crop for farmers that have been struggling with mainstream commodity prices for several years. The bill's sponsor says they have tried to pass the bill in previous sessions, but this year it has broad support. The difference is this year we've had the Department of Ag, uh, DPS, uh, Sheriff's Departments, the Attorney General, uh, Secretary of State's Office, uh, everybody has been uh, involved in, in planning and writing this bill. Industrial hemp was also legalized in the 2018 Farm Bill, legislation Noam voted for when she was a member of the House. When we return to Ag Week TV, a North Dakota bull sets a new sales record. The amount coming up. How can one tillage tool handle most field conditions, residue types, and tillage practices? It takes a renegade, the Summers VRT Renegade. Switch from vertical to aggressive tillage and anywhere in between. Adjust blade angles, tillage depth, and more on the go, all from an iPad. Get the tillage results you want, like only the Summers VRT Renegade can. For more information or a demo, contact your Summers dealer. Ag Week is excited to bring you the Ag Week app with useful features and the latest news and information right at your fingertips. Get your Ag Week news, weather, and the latest episodes of Ag Week TV. Plus, see real time information on the futures market and view local cash bids for your crops. Stay updated and take Ag Week with you wherever you are. Download the Ag Week app today. Where do you go for the latest news in agriculture? Ag Week Magazine. Reaching over 70,000 farmers and ranchers in North Dakota, Minnesota, South Dakota, and Montana. Ag Week provides the most up-to-date information on the markets, the trends, and the people who make it all happen. We're your source for news, not fluff. Dependable. Trusted. Ag Week. Subscribe today by calling 1-800-811-2580. I'm Jenny Garth, and as a mother of three, I know kids worry about a lot of things. Getting enough food to eat shouldn't be one of them. But here in America, that is a real worry for one in five children. Even though we are one of the most food-rich countries in the world, 15 million children don't know where their next meal is coming from. This is unacceptable, and something the Feeding America nationwide network of food banks is working to solve. Instead of accepting that our country lets billions of pounds of surplus food go to waste every year, Feeding America has made it their mission to help families in need by rescuing this food. Through food pantries and meal programs, the nationwide network of food banks provides more than three billion meals, serving virtually every community in the United States, including yours. Join me in supporting Feeding America and your local food bank by visiting feedingamerica.org. Together, we can solve hunger. Together, we're feeding America. And we end with a story many people are buzzing about this week. A bull from Mandan, North Dakota made history as the highest selling bull of all time. SAV America 8018, owned by Schaff Angus Valley, sold to Herbster Angus Farms of Fall City, Nebraska for $1.51 million. That's nearly double the price of the previous high selling bull, which sold last year for $800,000 and was also owned by the Schaffs. Thanks for watching this week's edition of Ag Week TV. Remember, for all your ag news, go to agweek.com or download the Ag Week app. And be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter as well. See you next week.